It's story time with Mr. Burnett. Story time with Mr. Burnett. It's bound to be something that you won't forget too soon. Hello, humans. So, it's monster season, and I have a different sort of monster book today. This one's, a, it's fun, but it's different. It's called Monsters Eat Whiny Children. And it is written and illustrated by Bruce Eric Kaplan, who sometimes puts his work in the New Yorker. And if you don't know what that, if that means nothing to you, don't worry about it. Monsters Eat Whiny Children Once there were two perfectly delightful children. Who were going through a terrible phase. Which is to say, they whined all day and night. I want to go outside, whined Henry. Outside, outside, whined Eve. Where's my phone, whined Henry. No grilled cheese, whined Eve, and so on. Their kindly father warned them that monsters eat whiny children. They didn't believe him, so they whined and whined and whined until finally one day... A monster came and stole them away. He brought them back to his lair on the bad side of town. <clears throat> he began making a whiny child salad. I don't like sitting on lettuce, Henry whined. No wooden bowl, whined Eve. The monster made dressing, poured it on Henry and Eve, and called his wife in for dinner. She sampled the dressing and spat it out. Ugh! I hate cilantro, she screamed. Start again, and this time use paprika. I hate paprika, said the monster. No, you don't, said his wife. Okay, he whined. So he hosed off Henry and Eve and made a new dressing with paprika. His wife tasted it. I love it, she said. Everything was perfect. But just as Henry and Eve were about to get back into the wooden bowl, a neighbor dropped by and asked the monsters what they were doing. When they told him, the neighbor totally freaked out. You've got two perfectly wonderful whiny children and you're going to make a stupid salad, he said. All week long, all I've wanted were whiny child burgers. Let's grill these kids up now. Yum. The monster and his wife thought for a moment. <clears throat> the neighbor said, come on, I can't wait another second. I think I even dreamed about whiny child burgers last night. Okay, said the monster. <clears throat> His wife sighed because this meant she had to clean their grill, which was disgusting. So they got the grill out from the back of the garage, cleaned it, and tried to make a good fire. But the monster couldn't do it, nor could his wife nor the neighbor, because it's hard to get a fire going sometimes. Henry started to whine, but then he got distracted by a ball. He rolled it over to Eve while the monsters were cursing at the grill. Finally, they asked the neighbor's cousin to come over, since he was good with grills. But he couldn't start a fire either, so he kicked a hole in the fence. He said, you should make a whiny child cake anyway. The monster's wife said she couldn't eat sweets because her bottom was too big. 
<clears throat> Everyone told her she was crazy. Besides, I hate baking, she said. I'll do it, said the neighbor's cousin. He started to assemble the ingredients to make the cake, but there was a terrible accident, and all the flour spilled all over the floor. <clears throat> so now... They couldn't make the cake. Plus, the oven had been preheating, so the kitchen was hot and everyone was sweaty. Why does everything have to be so hard? asked the monster. Anything worth doing involves a struggle, offered the neighbor. Henry felt bad for the monster, so he rolled the ball over to him. The monster bounced it against the wall and felt a little better. Eve looked around for something else to play with. She found some cars in the corner. She pushed one over to Henry, who happily made it crash into another car. We could make some rice, put a little curry on them, and have an Indian dish, someone suggested half-heartedly. Mm, perhaps a whiny child vindaloo. They all tried to figure out if they were in the mood for Indian food. Sometimes it's hard to figure out if you're in the mood for Indian food. As the monster's wife looked for some trucks to give to Henry and Eve, she thought about the last time she ate Indian food. It hadn't agreed with her, and she wondered if that would happen again. No Indian food, she de decided. What's going on here? Someone yelled in a loud and nasal voice. Everyone turned around to find the monster's aunt entering, angry at the world as she always was. They told her about their day, and she yelled at them. For Pete's sake, she said, hitting the neighbor's cousin with some spittle because she had a saliva problem. You should just make a simple whiny child cucumber sandwich. <clears throat> yes, 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 they all said and jumped up and down. It's such a relief to finally figure out what the right thing to eat is. Enough of this nonsense, said the monster's aunt. Let's start making the sandwiches. The monster excitedly went to the cupboard and found a nice loaf of healthy 12-grain bread. Oh, for Pete's sake, his aunt spat. Everyone knows you need fluffy white bread. The monster explained that he hadn't eaten white bread in years, but the neighbor quickly ran next door and came back with the fluffiest white bread anyone had ever seen. Next, they had to add the whiny children but they turned around to find that Henry and Eve had somehow escaped. So they all sat down and ate the cucumber sandwiches, which, while not like ones with whiny children, were absolutely delicious anyway. And here is the recipe. Cucumber sandwiches. 1. Lay out slices of fluffy white bread. 2. Spread mayonnaise or cream cheese or butter all over them. 3. Slice some cucumbers and put on some of the bread. 4. Put the rest of the bread on top and they are all ready to serve. Meanwhile, Henry and Eve ran back home and never whined again. Although, to tell you the truth, every now and then they did.
It says, the crumbs are the best part. Such a strange book. Such a silly, odd book. Monsters eat whiny children. What I like about this book is um, it's just kind of ambiguous, meaning it's hard to know who the good people and the bad people are because the, maybe the kids are whiny some, but all the monsters are whiny. Like, they're worse than the kids. I don't know what this story is about. I'm not sure exactly what the moral of this story is. Maybe we can talk about what's this story trying to tell us. I don't know. But I do like it. It's a fun story, and I hope you enjoyed uh, going through that with me. Thank you for joining me. Have a good day, people.